Ooh, what is up guys and of course welcome back to another VPL week 3 battle this time we're looking upon actually Matt versus Joey or of course the Quebec City Betix versus of course the Nido King Los Angeles Nido Kings and yeah so now that Matt's team is as follows Harlucha, Raichu, uh, Volcanion, Cacton, Bridges Steel and Kecleon so definitely a very interesting team and really really interesting synergy in general and have two water absorbers is very, very good. Consider, of course, the offensive Pokemon that are gonna face off against, which, of course, being the Silla Valley, which can be any typing. Celebi, Alolan Raichu, Tapufini, and of course, the Pizimian and the Licky Licky. So, um, so you're not it. It looks like how Lucha could do really well once, of course, Raichu is out of the way. And uh, then again, Raichu could be offensively checked, but of course you turn in mind. Uh, <clears throat> other than that, I actually don't know. I actually think there's a very, very fair synergy towards both teams. Definitely looks tough for both of them to break apart. Though, I really want to see Cacturn in action. That's my first initial thought. Like, Cacturn? Really? Awesome. Thank you for that. And of course, Cacturn can be a really, really interesting melee, of course, you know, if it is offensive or if it is defensive. If it is offensive, you can do heavy amount of damage, of course, towards Raichu and Celebi without any issue ever. Plus, he learns that you believe Yang Shot and can deal with Tapapini, and it is specially defensive. If it is a defensive side, then he's just going to go for self Ross in general, and of course, have Shadow Sneak and stuff like that. Though, it's very likely, with of course, Bridges Seal in mind, that that's going to be the, of course, Stealth Rocker of the game. And Yoi does not have any Stealth Rocker on this team. I don't believe Celebi gets that. I could be wrong. But anyway, with all this in mind, let's see actually how this battle went. Should be said though, Matt, um, Matt at this time is at minus two, have two losses behind him, and Joey has one win and one loss. So it's going to be a very, very interesting game for both of them. So it's going to start, Matt's going to start with, of course, Hersey Hawkins or the Howlucha, as we're going to see a Silver Valley lead here. Um, hmm, could it be Silver Valley ground? That's the question. And it's a 35 turn battle, so really interesting because there are, of course, offensive Pokemon that are bringing. Let's see, gonna go for a U-turn, clearly, with of course an item in mind, he's going to be faster. And that did a lot of damage, actually. Um, gonna start, go to Don Mario, that's the right code, alright. And he's going to naturally faster, definitely. But we have the big question, is it ground, or is it something else? As we're gonna see Ice Fang. Interesting. Wow. That's an offensive Silver Valley. That's definitely an offensive Silver Valley. I wonder if it is electric. It could very well be electric, actually. We actually don't know. I mean, is he's going to send in Hersey Hawk again? Are we going to see a multi-attack here? Possibly, of course. Hmm. Goes to Flame Charge, right? So things get scary, and scary definitely faster. So now he's able to outspeed. This means the Night Fang will be a lot more damaging. And now he does outspeed, even. Ooh. Ooh, and here comes the high jump kick. All right, is this a KO? It is. We never find out the typing. Could very well be ground, uh, stated at least. Uh, but that did a lot of damage. That definitely did a lot of damage. And money comes in, uh, which works the Pazimian. Pazimian could very well be, of course, scarped. And I do believe that right here, losing how Lucha could be very devastating for Mass. That's a very devastating loss. Then again, there is no real switch in for, of course, a close combat from a Bazimian. As, of course, Kecleon is going to come in. Most likely to go for Shadow Sneak here. Just to be able to get the protein going on. As a gumbo. Oh, dear God. that That's the name we're going with? <laughs> that's the name we're going with? Alright, so Fake Out. Nice. And it does fair damage. Uh, I do understand, by the way, why he brought the gumbo. Uh, because Matt has access to the likes of, I do believe, Gigalith and Excadrill, so those are really, really dangerous Pokemon to be dealing with. As Sora comes in, who is of course being Tabafini, now no, of course, Hazard can be set up, or not Hazard, I mean, no, what do you call it, I can't remember. Status on any Pokemon. Anyway, Protein Rain Punch did just about nope. And clearly it is offensive, but it's not going to be able to outspeed, so it has to switch out. So, nice to see both Fake Out and Brain Punch. Good combination of moves. It is very likely that it will have sh or Poison Jab, I think. But of course it's going to switch out. No way it's going to take a Moonblast. Alonso is going to come in. 
and that is a very, very good check for, of course, the Tabufini who sets up a substitute. Now, here's the thing. Volcano gets Sludge Wave and Sludge Bomb. We should be able to break apart this without an issue as we see Calm Mind. We do see Calm Mind. This could be scary. This could most certainly be a scary situation. I would definitely have been stressed out had this happened to me. As he goes for his own... <laughs> Sub up! <laughs> okay, so he's gonna be at plus two. The question is, is he able? Because both of them clearly has been thinking. They resist each other's stabs, therefore could be able to set up here. Um, the biggest issue is that Volcanion cannot set up Call Mine. Tapu Fini clearly can. He is forced to go for a sludge bomb, hoping that breaks us up. And I mean, even at that, it's a gamble now. It's better, it's truly a gamble. Sludge bomb, great. Did optimize for the better play or a better move. As please break the sub. Oh, there you go. Did it break? Did it break? Yay! It's not over. It is not over. Though, damn, he really has to go for it. He really has to go for a sludge wave. And Joey most likely must go for a calm mind to be able to, well, stop this notioning from happening. But it clearly is a tougher situation now. He just optimized for the calm mind again. That's the best play to go for, mainly because, well, let's face it, he wants to be where he won't be able to break the sub. As he goes for the sludge wave, and we're gonna see now how much damage it really does. And that looks to be not in range to break it. But it still does a lot of damage. We're we're plus three now, that's that's not doing a whole lot. Now here's the thing, he could keep going for Calm Mind stuff, I don't think necessarily anything stops him from doing so. Um, but now he can't get poisoned. Now he can't get poisoned. Let's use this over Substitute. It does slowly, is falling though, I mean Substitute clearly does take 25% after all. Hmm. And eventually Sludge Wave will run out too. Let's see, so we gotta get all the text again. It's super effective. Substitute faded. Ah, it's tough. Question is whether or not that's a roll. Question is whether or not that is a roll. And I mean, Matt can't do anything else. He has to go for offensive, but he has to keep attacking. He has no other option here. He really has no other option. As here comes the Moonblast, so he's gonna try to break this up or try. It's gonna break it. God damn it. Plus three, please. Um. <laughs> So I think that's the right series of blade. I've probably gone for another call mine. Uh, as here's a sludge wave, and oh dear God! I mean, it's all oh, there. We go. That's a wrap. That's that's why that's why Fina didn't win this matchup. That's that's for sure. I was just waiting. You know, I really really thought for a second there that maybe maybe Joey got him. But here we go. Mrs. Rain is over, and there's a poison. Thank you, game. Thank you for. <laughs> <laughs> Stopping any kind of setup motion from happening. Now we get to see, of course, how much Moonblast will do at plus three. It isn't too much. Oh, but a special attack fell. That's oh, it makes this kind of makes this really bittersweet because now Sludge we most certainly won't kill, and that would have meant that he could sub up against it if he so desired. But of course, poison is now a factor. At um, <clears throat> That's real unfortunate. That's that's crazy. That's crazy that, that this had to transpire like that. That's um, extremely unfortunate. As of course, Tapu Fini is gonna fall, and Volcano won the matchup, which was one of those matchups that just screamed. <laughs> and you know, it was a tough matchup in general. Which one would win? Clearly. So wait, Tapu Fini or Tapu Fini? Alone and Raichu comes in as a regular Raiko comes in. So, uh, Thunderbolt, Bolt Switch, most certainly Thunderbolt, and uh, that's not a Salt Vest, that's for sure. It did actually a lot of damage, oh, we saw Leftovers previously, I'm, I'm being bad. We've seen too much of Tabu Fini Volcano, too many turns. So, anyway, alright, they're not gonna risk it, gonna switch out directly, not go for a second place. Let's go to Gumbo! <laughs> now the question is, do we gonna see Aura Sphere here or not? 
shareable. That's that's wrong. That's not a that's not a worse for you. But as stated, it's a big question whether or not he has it. It would make sense for Licky Licky um, <clears throat> as switching out kind of states that he's not. So Seb Bonus is gonna come in Ridge Seal. What a nice nickname. As there comes the knockout, shouldn't do anything. But now rocks are most certainly gonna hit the field mainly because the any possible default that was of course the Tabafini is now gone. Let's see, an earthquake shouldn't do too much either. Radiosil is one of those Pokemon that just are kinda hard to kill. Ah, oh, it's a fun wave. Nice. That's not annoying. That's definitely not annoying. That's that's a great, great strat. That's why people hate Registeel. It's so goddamn tough to kill and just sabotage teams basically with the course of Thunder Waves. So are we gonna see not Heal Bell at least? <clears throat> now the issue with of course Registeel is that it can't recover. It can't recover whatsoever. Um, so it could very well very likely fall eventually here. Um, let's see, switch it out, go to KG. Hmm, so finally get to see Cacturn, like that's awesome. Like that's all I really wanted. Um Cacturn can very well get to care of course Drain Punch. This should do a plethora amount of damage. Actually goes directly for Sword Stance. Um, and we haven't seen all the move for Liquid Liquid, though it could very well have body slam. That's ice punch. No! I really wanted to see no. I really wanted to see Cacturn. Fuck. That's that's so unfortunate in so many ways. <laughs> Poor guy. Uh, so anyway, he's gonna switch out. A fake out is really, really obvious here. Is he, I mean, is either that or go directly for brain punch to student the damage? Hmm. Goes for knockoff. That's that's not bad. That is definitely not bad. That's a scarfer out of the way, and Pazimium, much like Primeape, are an excellent scarfer. So that's. That's good. That's actually kind of good. Bigger question is whether or not it had Shadow Sneak here to be able to wall the Basimian. Uh, so it goes actually to sub on his back again. Probably going to sack it here for, of course, a close combat. Which makes sense. That's definitely the right play. It, it did the stuff it needed to and just kept going. And that's pretty much at the end of the day what it needs. And now, of course, Kelio can very well come in here and go for a fake out. Do a massive amount of damage to, of course... The Pazimian, as we're gonna see Raikou actually come in. And the big question is Did you have the Aura Sphere? Did ya? Doesn't need to go for it anyway, but you know, it could very, very likely be at Gumbo finds his way in again, which it did. Of course, it did. Alright. So, Cloud9, Aura Sphere, Aura Sphere, Aura Sphere, Aura Sphere. No! Then again, I could very well understand why he doesn't have Aura Sphere. It says, of course, if it was a rash nature, it would not be able to have speed, of course, the likes of a Raichu. So it does make sense, but it is unfortunate in a matchup where it could very well have been effective for it. So anyway, guys, we're going to go back to, of course, the Kecleon as uh, he's fully paralyzed. Finally, paralyzation is taking its toll. It's, it's great. It's awesome. It's exactly what you need. Uh, now, the bigger question is, did you go for Drain Punch this time? The main reason I say that is because he needs to get some recovery going on. There we go. And that's what Kecleon does best. It's a very interesting mod with that in mind. As it actually does a fair amount of damage. And as stated, the bigger question is whether or not he has Shadow Sneak as his last filler move. We've seen Fake Out, we've seen Brain Punch, we've seen Knock Off. So there is one move going on, and it's going to be Shadow Sneak. There we go. That's That seals the fate of the Vizimian. As is of course gonna fall. Hey, Kecleon get a kill, that's awesome. Kecleon is definitely on the radar in this kind of environment. Protein are just that type of game changer. Definitely interesting to see it going on here. As Navy or Navi comes in. Hey, hey you! I get it. Um <clears throat> That was my impression, by the way, of Navi from Zelda in a green of time. Anyway, <laughs> Alonso's gonna be switched in, not gonna risk any possible damage. Um, I don't believe he needs Volcano anymore either. I mean, he did take care of Fini, and in the end of the day, that's all he really did was forced to do. It looks like he could very well be able to take another Giga Drain. Uh, even a Psyche, I believe, I'll also can take it without any possible, of course, ramification. And just spam that, of course, the Fire Blast. But here is their power. That's that's a wrap. That's, that's unfortunate. That's not what you wanted to see. 
as Volcanium with Ball. That's that's tough. So Brikovsky is gonna come in again, which of course being a kick Leon, and now I can go for fake out. Probably gonna use scout to damage that, but no, he goes directly for the knockoff. All right, that's. I wonder how much damage will this do to a Celebi? That's a very interesting question. It pretty much pops it. Oh my god. And Shadow Snake should definitely be able to kill the rest of the Celebi, as that is exactly what it does. My god, we are seeing a Kecleon in action. We are seeing THE Kecleon in action. I heard the stories, but I never knew. I never knew. This is this is how you do it, people. This is how you do it. So Pancake comes in, being of course the right you. I wonder, Shadow Snake should still be at very, very close to KO. He's not gonna risk it though, he's probably gonna go for the combination of fake out, I do believe. And of course Raikou can most certainly switch in here no matter what. So let's see now. It goes for Thunderbolt, that's great. Definitely soak that as leftovers is a possible for recovery. Um I we have of course Shadow Ball. Like Shadow Ball is the only thing Raikou can go do from this range, I'm sure. Hmm. Ghost action for Call Mind. Oh, he goes for a possible setup here. He definitely goes for a possible setup. It's very likely Raikou can stay for the rest of the game without need to worry. Then again, we have Psy Shock. We do not have Psy Shock. Ooh, but it did a lot though. It definitely did a lot. Raikou is faster. Shadow Ball could very well KO at plus one. But yeah, we did not have Psy Shock. I believe that's super unfortunate, even though of course Shadow Ball will most likely hear KO. And I'm trying to remember which Pokemon is the last Pokemon from of course Yoi's side. Um this turned out to be quite the interesting game actually. A lot of shifting momentum. I like that. Really liked it a lot. Gumbo is, of course, the last Pokemon here. Poor, poor, poor Gumbo. I wonder whether or not Kefir could have wrapped up the game himself there at the end and just gone for Shadows and against, of course, Alola Raichu. With that said, Matt is absolutely going to win this game. There is no way that Yoi can turn his one around. And hey, it's a 2 0 victory for Matt, who actually, at this game, had, of course, two losses behind him. And he plays this game excellent. Now, I want to say a few pointers, but I don't have a lot, because both here plays good. Both both players plays well here. Cacturn play, a bit of weird error going for Swold Stance. Uh, I would not have really an Ice Beam, so, with, or Ice Punch. I shouldn't say too much about it. I just I really want to see Cacturn. <laughs> and of course, the Volcania versus Tapafini. I don't know if that matchup and that setup happened too early. That's all I really can say about that. Would, would Joe have been better off had he gone for Lilika Licky instead and just tried to deal with it that way or gone for Pissimia and go for damage? Uh, we don't necessarily have to find that out. And of course, even Celebi is a possible switch and even with, of course, Fire Blast in mind. Uh, he needed to break, of course, a sub. I know that. But at the same time, it just... I don't know if the setup was worth it because Tabafini wasn't able to stop it. He wasn't able to set up against it. And of course... Matt had the same strat, which was kind of annoying, and ironic, I should say. But yeah, outside of that, excellent game, and uh, really looking forward to see both of these players, and of course, in the future battles. Thank you, of course, guys, for playing this game. You guys did really well here. Uh, if you guys are watching, hope you enjoyed this game, and I'll see you next VPL battle. Until then, take care. Bye.